Section 4 of the Partnership Act speaks of person who can enter into partnership with one another. Thus, it can only be individuals and not a body of persons. A body of persons, like a firm, cannot enter into partnership with other individual. While examining the scheme of the Partnership Act and the English law on the subject, the definition given to person by the General Clauses Act 1897 cannot be extended to the Partnership Act. The word persons in Section 4 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932, which has replaced Section 239 of the Indian Contract Act 1872, contemplates only natural or artificial, that is legal persons, and firm is not a person, and as such is not entitled to enter into a partnership with another firm, or Hindu undivided family or individual. Partners are, for the purposes of the Partnership Act, called collectively a firm, but the firm is not a corporate body. A partnership firm is not a legal person, even though it has also some attributes of personality. In the case of Commissioner Income Tax versus Chitambaram Pillai, it was held that in income tax law, a partnership firm is a unit of assessment by special provisions, but it is not a full person. It is the collective name of all the partners who are liable to tax under the specific taxation laws. It is not different from the partners constituting it. Supreme Court in Bacha F. Guzdar v. Commissioner Income Tax has observed that partnership is merely an association of persons for carrying on the business of the partnership. And in law, the firm name is a compendious method of describing the partners. While in the case of a company, it stands as a separate juristic entity distinct from its shareholders. In Mandalsa Devi v. Ram Narayan Private Limited, the court, while considering Order 30 of the Civil Procedure Code, observed that the legal fiction must not be carried too far and it is for some purposes that the law has extended a limited personality to a firm which is not a legal entity. The persons who are individually called partners are collectively called a firm and the name under which their business is carried on is called the firm name. The Indian Partnership Act 1932 does not make any distinction between de facto partners and de jure partners. The test to find out whether a particular person can be said to be a partner is to see as to whether he can successfully bring a suit for dissolution of the partnership and for taking accounts in his own name. If he can, he is a partner. It is well settled that if the manager of a joint family enters into a partnership with another firm or with any other individual, the whole family does not become a partner in that partnership. To conclude, the Indian Partnership Act 1932 has by Section 4 defined partnership as the relation between persons who have agreed to share the profits of the business carried on by all or any one of them acting for all. The section declares further that the person who have entered into partnership with one another are called individually partners and collectively a firm. The components of the definition of partnership and therefore of a firm which reflects the nature of partnership consists of firstly persons, secondly a business carried on by all of them or any of them acting for all and thirdly an agreement between those persons to carry on such business and to share the profits. It is the relationship between those persons who constitute the partnership. The relation is founded in the agreement between them. The foundation of the partnership and therefore of a firm is a partnership agreement. A partnership agreement is the source of the partnership. 
it also gives expression to other ingredients defining the partnership. 